Um, it is awesome. They have Crew 9 home, just a, a beautiful landing. I think many of you heard that uh, back in January, the president asked SpaceX um, what it would take to bring the, this crew home. And I will tell you that at the time that that question was asked, we were already looking at options, what to do with the Crew 10, Crew 9 um, situation and how we're going to set that up. I'll tell you a little bit, you know, when you plan these dynamic activities, a lot of work goes into them. For example, for the, the landing that you guys just witnessed today, there's a number of things that we look at, a number of factors, the weather being one of them. Uh, you saw great weather today. Um, we, in addition, we look at the, uh, the readiness of the, of the recovery team to make sure they're ready to go. We look at the handover time on orbit between the incoming crew and the departing crew to make sure there's enough time for activities to be accomplished uh, before the departing crew leaves. Uh, we do have the benefit of having NASA astronaut Don Pettit remaining on board. He'll be coming home on Soyuz in, in April, um, and so he'll continue the handover with the crew. We also look at the vehicle traffic, the vehicles coming and going. And when you pull all that together, the International Space Station Program, the Commercial Crew Program, and SpaceX came up with the plan that we just witnessed, the Crew 10 launch last week, the docking over the weekend, the undock early today, and then the landing that we just witnessed. So just uh, an incredible amount of inputs that you get to pull all that together in order to have a successful operation. I want to tell you we want to thank the Crew 9 team and the ground teams for their dedication to excellence, their resilience, their flexibility during this expedition, everything they did to have a successful expedition, as, as you all have all witnessed. Uh, SpaceX, SpaceX has been an incredible partner for us, um, and it shows the benefits of the commercial, public, private partnership that we have. So just they've just been a, a huge, great partner throughout all this. Um, Crew 9, in addition to the spacewalks that many of you witnessed, uh, they performed uh, just about 150 experiments on board the International Space Station with over 900 hours of research. And the work we do on the International Space Station benefits the nation, benefits people on Earth, and are the building blocks for going back to the moon and to Mars. So Nick, Alexander, Butch, and Sonny, welcome home. Um, on behalf of NASA, I want to thank the administration. I want to thank all the work of the NASA teams and all the work of the SpaceX teams. And so with that, I'll hand it over to Commercial Crew Program Manager, Steve Stitch. Thank, thanks, Joel, and uh, thank you all for being here. Greatly appreciate your interest in the Commercial Crew Program and also human spaceflight. Um, of course, as you know, it's been just a huge week for Commercial Crew, uh, you know, the missions, I think, sometimes seem easier than they are. If I just step back and think about all the challenges we had to, to launch Crew-9, moving to a different launch pad, uh, adjusting the seats and the, the crew training, um, and, and then, you know, over the weekend, uh, once we docked Crew-10 safely, looking at the weather patterns, finding this great opportunity that we landed at today, adjusting the timeline. Uh, you know, it's never easy. Space flight's always dynamic. Uh, sometimes it seems like things move from step to step to step, but there's usually different paths along the way. So um, the weekend was culminated today with the landing of Crew 9. Uh, we drag and splash down at about 5.57 p.m. off the coast of Tallahassee. That's our first uh, commercial crew program landing at Tallahassee. We've had a couple cargo flights land there. Um, and now it's great to have Crew 9 and the Freedom Capsule back home, and its fourth flight is now in the history books. Of course, we're overjoyed. I, I watched every crew member come out of the vehicle today post-landing. It was great to watch Nick, Sonny, Butch, and Alexander come out of Dragon and, and smile and wave as they came out of the vehicle. Um, you know, we'll get them. They're on the ship now. We'll get them back uh, to meet the NASA aircraft and then back to meet with their families. Uh, if you watched the weather today, uh, it was incredible. Uh, clear skies, uh, real low winds, maybe three or four knots of wind and really calm seas. You could see the dolphins swimming around the capsule, which was kind of incredible. Uh, SpaceX had a, a nice drone uh, uh, aircraft flying around and taking footage, and that was just incredible. Uh, as I said, the ops team just did a phenomenal job over the weekend pulling in the landing to get the crew home sooner and take advantage of this great weather opportunity. Really appreciate the versatility of SpaceX, uh, the ISS program, uh, 
commercial crew program and the flight ops team in pl planning out the timeline, looking at the crew's workload, determining whether we could pull this off, doing sleep shifting, all those sorts of things that, uh, that made this an opportunity happen. I also want to thank our partners at the U.S. Coast Guard. They were there on scene protecting, protecting the scene and making sure that it was safe for mariners in the area. Uh, the FAA, the Department of Defense, continuing to support us. You know, it's, it's great to see the teams really in action. Um, overall, I would say it was a really clean undocking, uh, reentry, and landing. Uh, the Dragon vehicle performed extremely well, didn't really have uh, any issues to work. Um, you know, little things, uh, a GPS outage that we reset a filter on and things like that. Uh, today, the sequence went perfectly. We jettisoned the trunk, executed the deorbit burn, uh, closed the nose cone and did the entry. Uh, you could hear uh, Nick call down when we finally got the vehicle back through the blackout, 4.6 Gs, and you could tell they were doing well, and then braced for the parachute deploy of the drogues and then the, the mains and then having splashdown. So parachutes performed well. Uh, the whole system worked just to, as planned. Uh, um, the crew's doing great. You know, they'll spend a little time on the recovery ship getting checked out, making sure that they're healthy and ready to go, and then eventually they'll wait, make their way back to Houston. Again, I want to congratulate the entire NASA commercial crew program, the SpaceX team. You know, in many ways, if I step back to last year, this has been nine months in the making, and I couldn't be prouder of our team's versatility, our team's ability to adapt, and and really build for the future of human spaceflight and looking at different ways to do business, taking advantage of one vehicle to launch a crew and then bring back the crew in a different vehicle. Our partner SpaceX did a tremendous job. Every time we asked them to do something a little different, they stepped up and, and to the plate and did that, including swapping capsules six weeks ago prior to Crew 10, and then also adjusting uh, the Crew 9 mission. Um, you know, we'll celebrate for a while. We're going to take some time in commercial crew to celebrate this one and, and spend a little time with the crew. Uh, and then we'll move on to Crew 11. Crew 11 will be here before we know it. We'll launch that vehicle as early as mid-July. So we'll start preparing for that. And then, you know, we're working hand-in-hand -hand with Boeing as well uh, on certification of Starliner, uh, getting that vehicle back to flight. Uh, you know, Butch and Sonny's return on Dragon to me shows how important it is to have two different uh, crew transportation systems, the importance of Starliner and the redundancy that we're building in human spaceflight for our low Earth urban economy. Uh, we're super grateful for Boeing as well uh, and their investment. They're keenly interested in the landing today. They have a watch party going on and are watching uh, Butch and Sonny come back. And they've asked, texted me, uh, you know, at the build up to this, they're very keenly interested in Butch and Sonny. And then we're interested in their resilience. That whole Boeing team like our whole commercial crew program team is resilient and moving forward to the next steps on Starliner. Um, it's been a busy start to 2025. It's, it's hard to believe uh, we're in the middle or toward late March. Uh, looking for an exciting summer as well. And I look forward to your questions and I'll hand it over to Bill. All right, thanks, Steve. Yeah, welcome and, and thanks for everybody's interest uh, as we continue on. Uh, return today marks the uh, successful completion of the Crew-9 mission and really with them handing over operations on board to Crew-10. Um, just some, some interesting uh, stats as we, uh, as we go through. Nick and Alexander both spent 171 days in space uh, on this trip, uh, seeing the arrival and departure of four different visiting vehicles to the ISS. Butch and Sonny spent 286 days in space, and they got to see eight different visiting vehicles coming and going uh, from the ISS. We stay really busy as we talk about all these uh, vehicles coming and going uh, from, from the station. Uh, Nick and Butch each uh, conducted one spacewalk and Sonny conducted two. Um, that actually gave Sonny the record for most time on spacewalks by a woman and puts her fourth overall in terms of time outside uh, doing, uh, doing spacewalks. The crew, crew contributed to more than 150 unique experiments, like Joel said. Um, including stem cell technology to potentially address blood diseases, autoimmune disorders, and cancers. They tested lighting systems to help maintain circadian rhythms, which will help improve conditions for not only future crews as you go through uh, spaceflight, but also those on the ground for shift workers and those in extreme or remote environments. They did plant growth and quality uh, experiments to support future Moon and Mars missions as we look forward with that. They loaded a really interesting experiment. JAXA had their first wooden satellite. They loaded that into and 
got that deployed uh, from the ISS. And then if, as part of their spacewalk, Butch and Sonny collected samples from the, from the station's exterior to study the survivability of microorganisms in the vacuum of space. I'll tell you, the Crew-9 crew did a great job here in the near term supporting this shortened handover period with Crew-10 and enabling that landing opportunity that we saw today. Uh, there was a lot of work that they did ahead of uh, Crew 10 arrival to get prepared and then really uh, working through all of the things that we need to do to hand over the emergency procedures to the crew, uh, to get the cargo transferred that they need to, and to get the, all the vehicles set up for Crew 10 to be very successful. Crew 10 is already working hard, and uh, they're working on key science investigations on board. They already kicked them off uh, even while they were getting prepped for undocking uh, the other day. So coming up on ISS, we still have a lot going on. Uh, we have NG-21 release at the end of March, uh, providing, providing some important trash disposal for the space station. Um, always, you gotta get rid of all the stuff that you bring up, so you gotta bring that down somehow, and NG-21 is gonna take away a lot of that. And then we'll look forward to uh, Soyuz MS-27 launch Tuesday, April 8th from Baikonur Cosmodrome at about 12.47 a.m. Central. That'll be carrying NASA astronaut Johnny Kim and cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhikov and Alexei Zabritsky. And then before Soyuz MS-26 returns, Alexei Chinin will pass on the role of ISIS commander to our JAXA astronaut Takuya Nishi. Um, really a lot of great stuff continuing on station. Uh, I really appreciate the entirety of the team joint with SpaceX, NASA, our operations team, the program teams, the engineering teams, all the work it takes to turn around these missions. Uh, it's a ton of stuff, and then we go change it on them at the last minute, and they handle it like the pros that they are. So welcome home to uh, Crew 9, and with that, I'll hand it over to Sarah. All right, thanks, Bill. Well, it's a, it's a good day to be here at SpaceX, and, and it's a good day down in Florida as we welcome Crew 9 home from their stay at the International Space Station. Um, we're, we're happy to have safely returned Nick, Alex, Sonny, and Butch back to Earth and to their families after their time at the orbiting laboratory. Human spaceflight is dynamic and exciting, and this crew knows that as well as any other. So back in September, Steve was talking about this a bit, um, Crew 9 became the first human spaceflight mission to launch from Pad 40 using our new Dragon Tower that we completed construction on last year. And it was our first mission in a while to fly a crew of two since Bob and Doug's historic flight in 2020. So then just three days ago, we launched Crew 10 to take over and continue the work of Crew 9 on ISS. And I forgot to mention this Friday night, but Crew 10 was our 50th Dragon mission since first launching COTS-1 in December of 2010. That's a huge milestone for the team. Um, COTS, if you don't remember, stands for Commercial Orbital Transportation Services. And COTS-1 was the first demonstration mission under that original partnership with NASA to, to resupply the space station with cargo flights. It was also the mission that inspired me to join the SpaceX team, which I'm so grateful I was given the opportunity to do a few months later. So the rest is history. We've been bringing cargo and more recently crews to the orbiting lab for well over a decade since. And as we talked about a few days ago after Crew 10 launch, NASA and SpaceX adapted as this mission evolved. Um, and I appreciate all the kind words said already during this, this press conference. Um, as, as we adapted together, we, we kept safety at the forefront. And thanks to the teamwork across the two agencies, a change in the Dragon spacecraft for Crew-10 and then a shortened handover helped accelerate the Crew-10 launch and the Crew-9 return. Then over the weekend, we decided as a joint team to undock a day earlier than originally planned to take advantage of some great weather we were seeing off the coast of Tallahassee for splashdown. So um, I know this required a, quite a bit of creativity from the NASA team and the onboard crew to compress the handover even further than they already had. And I'm thankful for everyone's hard work and flexibility to safely bring Dragon and the crew home today. I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that today's return was also our final Dragon recovery on the East Coast. So after six years of successful recovery operations off the coast of Florida, we'll now be moving all Dragon recovery operations back to the West Coast. I just hope the California coast can bring as many dolphins as we saw during today's operation. That was, that was really fun to see. We had a nominal return today. Dragon is healthy and the parachute performed as expected. The crew is likely on the recovery vessel now, soon to transit to the SpaceX NASA handover location, while the SpaceX vessel transports Dragon back to our refurbishment facility at Cape Canaveral in Florida. It's amazing to think that SpaceX has now safely flown 62 crew members from 14 countries to space. 
52 of those to and from the International Space Station. Dragon has supported 46 missions to the station in all, and 29 of those on reflown Dragons. I, I think that's enough flights that we can be really proud of what the team has built together and, and what we've accomplished, but always with the humility and awareness that we will continue to learn every single mission. The stakes of getting this right are and always will be high. And as Bill Gerstenmeier often says, we, we must always stay hungry and vigilant to scour the data before, during, and after every operation we perform. Uh, it's always an honor for, for all of us here at SpaceX to launch human spaceflight missions and safely return astronauts and cosmonauts as we continue to advance human spaceflight. Thanks for having me on the briefing today and look forward to your questions. All right. Thank you all for your opening remarks. We will go ahead and start taking some questions in the room. So please raise your hand, Gina. <clears throat> go ahead. I think this is uh, for Steve Stitch. Uh, I mean, Crew 9's home, but the research hasn't stopped because what you need to know about what happened with Butch and Sonny on orbit, that's still an ongoing medical research project. Would you kind of like expand on that for me? What will you learn about their nine months on the space station? Yeah, I, I, I think I can comment and then see if Bill has anything to add. But, you know, every single crew member that we fly in orbit, we collect medical research data. We do various blood draws at various times uh, during the uh, flight, especially toward the end, uh, do bone density measurements in space. We look at their vision and how their vision might change over time, their intracranial pressure. We do all kinds of things. So you're, you're right. Every single astronaut, when they come back, including Nick and Alexander, has participated in all kinds of experiments, and, and we're learning from all those. And I'll see if Bill has anything to add. I mean, I think you covered the vast majority of it. We, we look at everybody when they come home, and every duration adds to that database of knowledge of the effects of spaceflight on the human body. And so we continue to look at that across all of our crew members. Okay, we'll take another question here in the room. Mark, go ahead. Uh, Mark Strassman, CBS News. Um, Steve, I want to pick up on something you said, which is the keen interest in Butch and Sonny. All five major television networks cut in with live special reports following the splashdown because Butch and Sonny have arguably become America's most famous astronauts over the course of their nine-month saga. So now that they're home, now that the saga is over, what do you use the takeaway? Yeah, I think uh, that, that's a great question, and I haven't probably had a lot of time to reflect. Um, you know, we're certainly looking at Starliner very carefully. We're in the process of looking at that vehicle, looking at the helium system. We've got some candidate seals that we're going to replace. We'll get into some testing uh, here over the summer time frame with uh, what we call an integrated doghouse at White Sands. Uh, so we're looking at that. Um, you, you know, the thing I think back of this whole time frame is how uh, really resilient Butch and Sonny were the whole time. I mean, they launched on what was going to be a short test flight with the crew flight test vehicle with Boeing. And then they moved very quickly into station increment operations, and they became seamlessly part of the International Space Station. And they did that because they're experienced astronauts, and we had prepared, right? We had flown gloves for them to do spacewalks, and we had flown a lot of components for them. So I think that shows the adaptability of crew members. And if I think forward to exploration and maybe some harsh missions uh, to the Martian surface someday or back to the moon, you know, the adaptability of crew members, uh, mm -hmm. changing the timeline for their return, uh, certainly a huge thank you to their families. Uh, you know, when you think about Butch and Sonny, they uh, enjoyed their time on station. They got to do spacewalks and they got to do lots of cool science and things like that. Their families are the ones that really, you know, kudos to them for uh, being resilient in a, a planned short duration flight now turning into a long duration. And I think back of when they went into quarantine. They went into quarantine in the April time frame for the early May launch that we had for the crewed flight test. So the families, a huge thank you to them. I'm sure the reunion is going to be wonderful with the families. Um, and we'll keep learning uh, as we go and keep uh, being adaptable in, in the future. And let okay. me just add, it, it, if it's okay, it, be, it shows the flexibility of our commercial providers. The fact that they flew up on the Boeing vehicle and home on SpaceX, this is a lesson learned for NASA, too, 